warm welcome. Morena. Te rangi marie o te kraiti ki a koe. May the peace of Christ be with us all. It really is a great pleasure. Um, I remember it must have been 10 years ago I spoke out there in that back room. It was the day after the tsunami had happened in um, Japan. I remember it clearly. Um, gosh, is it, it must be 10 years, so it's been a while. But it's lovely to be back with you. And I have had a, an absolute blast for the past three days spending time with some amazing people. Many of them are part of this family. So what great people. So I don't know about you, but I ask questions because I don't know the answers. And as Paul just said, that wasn't true of Jesus. He knew the answers and yet he focused so much of his interaction with people on asking them questions. The four Gospels include 339 questions that Jesus asked. Why do you think he asked so many questions? Share your wisdom with the person next to you. Why ask them? Why did Jesus ask so many questions? I got in trouble, so I might not have your help. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just always need to be flexible, eh? That's great. No worries. Right. So I'm curious. Let's see what you think as we go on. I'm not going to ask you to throw out. In fact, actually, yeah. Why not? Some answers. Why do you think Jesus asked so many questions? Have we got an answer? Something from this side of the auditorium? Yeah, to see what people were thinking. Brilliant. Something from the middle here. To wake them up. Oh, wow. You're not speaking from experience, are you, Paul? And there was something else over here? Starting conversation. Brilliant. And then something from this side, right from the back there. <laughs> Wonderful answers. Absolutely, to try and motivate people, get them to think. Isn't it interesting, when, when people ask Jesus a question, he often gave them a question back. In fact, he hardly ever gave them a direct answer to anything. Jesus liked to share his thoughts through parables that required his audience to go away and figure out the answer for themselves. And that's exactly what you were saying there, wasn't it? I think that is a really significant thing to understand regarding how we learn from God. It's not about downloading answers so much. There's a time and place for that. But rather, we learn by daring to follow the questions that God stirs in our hearts. So what kinds of questions did Jesus ask? Now, if there are 139, oh, 339 listed in the Gospels, there must be some coming to mind. Share one with the person next to you. A question Jesus asked. Just share it with the person next to you. It'll make you think. Great. There's a lovely hum going on. So some of you have read the Gospels. Fantastic. Right. So in the Gospels, we see Jesus as the master of questions. He expertly digs down into reality to produce both God awareness and self awareness. And that's what came through just before in your, in your answers. You know, there's a deep tradition in Christianity, in fact, I think it comes from St. Augustine, that knowledge of God is connected to self-knowledge, and knowing self is connected to knowing God. Self-awareness and God-awareness go hand in hand, because if we're going to meet God, we need to become more acquainted with the depths of who we are. And Jesus was intent on getting to the heart of people. We see Jesus do this when he engaged with others. He not only revealed the Father to them, but he revealed who they were through questions. And I've got a few examples for you. I wonder if you came up with them. 
a common one. What do you want me to do for you? This one out of Mark 10, replying to a request from James and John. Can you drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I'm baptised with? Glenn. So, what do you want me to do for you? Luke 18. He asks Bartimaeus, who is blind. He didn't presume. He said, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want? John 1. When John's disciples started following him. Will you give me a drink? John 4. Do you want to get well? John 5. Speaking to the disabled man by the pool. So if we're going to become, if we want to become more like Jesus and do what he did, we must be careful and wise and asking good questions as well. But Jesus uses questions differently than we commonly do. We ask questions for information. And there's nothing wrong with that, but consider that Jesus asks questions to provoke transformation. We ask questions for answers. Jesus asks questions for awareness. Jesus asks questions to confront the listener with their own thoughts, their own preconceptions, their own assumptions, their beliefs, their blind spots. And this makes sense, doesn't it? After all, Jesus is about repentance. Remember Mark 1. He, Jesus came announcing the kingdom of God and he challenges people to repent and believe. But he also challenges us. He also invites us to grapple with our own conception of reality and examine it in the light of what God has to say. And for, in order for us to do this, we have to be aware of what we actually think and believe. And you know, as his disciples, Jesus invites us. He invites us to join with him in his mission. It's not an optional extra. His mission is focused on redeeming, transforming of broken, um, broken humanity and broken creation. In one way, and it was lovely to hear about Thailand there, another way of being involved in this mission of journeying with people towards transformation is by learning to ask good questions, just like Jesus did. So if we want to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, if we want to join him in his mission of seeing transformation, is learn to ask questions which reveal hearts, open up blind spots in others and in ourselves. And so if we look at the questions that Jesus asked, there are five qualities. Now, someone, someone else has done this. I can't take credit for the five Cs, but there are five qualities of Jesus' questions. They were concrete. He used them for connection, and I heard that said down here. Through questions, he, he showed compassion, curiosity, and courage. So five questions that Jesus, five types of questions Jesus used to enable him to reckon with reality in a transformational way. So the first one, they were concrete. Jesus asked a lot of what questions. And for those of you who are in the three-day workshop, I said, turn, you can virtually turn any question into what, and it makes it easier to draw people out using what. They ask why questions as well. He really wasn't into abstract theological conversations. No, we, we read of the Pharisees trying to trick him with abstract questions around paying taxes. And, and in Matthew 22, they wanted to um, trick him or make him fall over his own wisdom by asking about um, whose wife would a woman be after the resurrection. Jesus wants to deal with the realities of actual life. And... Um, we see some great examples of, of these kinds of questions. John 20, the morning of his resurrection, Mary is there crying because Jesus' body wasn't there. And he comes close and he says, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And these simple questions led to Mary's understanding being considerably broadened and resulting in being the first evangelist, the first person to carry the news of the resurrection. 
And so if we apply this general, um, these general ideas to us, we can use these kinds of questions too. These kinds of simple questions, what and why questions, bring insight into reality and clarify expectations. What is it you're hoping for? Just a simple question. Many people get discouraged and upset because of unrealized expectations. And half the time, well, actually, more than half the time, we're not aware we have them, but we do. We all have expectations. And when these unrealized expectations, well, when they're unrealized, we get upset and we wonder why. So, what, are you, what, is, it, what is it you're hoping for? Brings awareness and a way forward. Another one, what? What makes that important to you now? Just a simple one. So what makes that important to you now? Brings awareness around values. So let's try it. Think of a challenge you've got in your life, and you don't have to talk to your neighbours anymore. This is just for you. Just reflect for a moment. Think of a challenge or a situation you're facing. What is it you're hoping for? Just reflect. What is it you're hoping for? And what makes that important for you now? What makes that important for you now? And notice what values are showing up. It brings clarity. Just notice what values are bubbling up for you as you reflect on those questions. Bring self-awareness. Okay. So the first characteristic of Jesus' questions, they were concrete. They were concrete. Second one, he connected. Through questions, he aimed for connection. Thank you. So the religious leaders interrogated Jesus with questions. Their questions were not sincere. They were traps to try and win power and approval from others. But Jesus posed questions in order to connect to the woman at the well in John 4. Will you give me a drink? Questions are a personal, account, personal encounter for Jesus. His questions communicated through body, language, speech, eye contact, and touch that he was present with and for the one who was sharing. And Jesus did this quite often. Eye contact. Martha. Martha. The young ruler, Mark 10, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Peter, after he denied Jesus three times, Luke 22, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. As I said before, he used first names, Martha. He spoke to women in public. It was outside the bounds of Jewish culture. He spoke to the woman at the well. So we can learn from Jesus how better to connect with people using sincere listening. Questions that connect rather than intimidate, of course, in culturally appropriate ways. Okay, so we've got concrete, we've got connection. The third one, compassion. There was a depth of compassion to the, uh, the questions that Jesus asked. He had incredible presence. As we read through the Gospels, we see that Jesus was able to bear with another in whatever they were dealing with so they could experience the grace of the Father. In John 21, I've just mentioned before, where Jesus asks Peter three times, Simon, son of John, do you love me? You can hear his compassion, his kindness coming through. He was inviting Peter back into relationship, inviting Peter to forgive himself. John 8, he gently questions the woman caught in adultery. Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord. And he said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. There was this 
compassion that oozed out of him through his questions. For many of us, asking and listening in compassion is difficult because we can't bear. Often we can't bear other people's suffering, we can't bear sometimes their badness, we can't bear their pain without wanting to solve it or fix it. And when we can't, we, we stay away from that situation. Often we're a better judge and accuser than advocate and friend. So let's learn from Jesus. Learn to just be with those who are suffering, those who are struggling. Because often they're not expecting anyone to fix or to solve it. And just a, a hint there, if, if you don't know what to say, Next up, thanks. I can see you're in pain. I can see you're upset. All you need to say is, so what's going on for you? And just listen. Just listen. And resist telling your own story. I think for those of us, uh, people have gone through hard times. As soon as sometimes you open your mouth, the person listening will jump in with their own story. Hold back and just listen. That's often all people need, someone to listen. So the fourth quality, curiosity. Curiosity. Jesus models sincere curiosity. He asked open-ended questions so people could discover the kingdom for themselves in their midst. And this genuine curiosity holds a space of safety so they could discover, so they could meet God in the depths of vulnerability and authenticity. And this is something we're accustomed to. Most of us have many ways to avoid being vulnerable, or we turn a question into an interrogation where others are triggered into um, defensive or rationalizing postures. Jesus asked genuine, not loaded questions. We see this in Mark 8. He, he says to his disciples, so who do you say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? Who do you say I am? Just wide open. And there's a wonderful reply. Peter answered, you are the Messiah. You see how he just, he just held that space. He was curious. He just drew out the truth. And Peter, for the first time, articulated this wonderful statement of faith. After sharing the parable of the lost sheep in Matthew 18, Jesus says to the listeners, so what do you think? After telling the parable of the Good Samaritan, Luke 10, which of these three do you think was a good neighbor? And the expert in the law replied, well, the man who had mercy on him. He just held that space and helped people discover for themselves. Self-discovery is more powerful than being told. So what do you think? What do you believe? Great questions we can ask people. Genuinely engage. What do you think? What do you believe? And then give them the gift of really listening without waiting for a chance to tell them what you think. Because when we've really listened, then they may be curious and ready to hear and invite us to share what we believe. So we've got... Concrete, they were concrete. He used them for connection. He used them to show compassion. He was curious, genuinely curious. And the fifth quality, courage. To ask questions like Jesus takes courage. Because looking at ourselves with God can be a terrifying experience. Look at Job in, in chapter 42 and Isaiah in chapter 6. When exposed to the majesty and the holiness of God, they realized how inadequate they were. 
Perhaps this is why the most repeated phrase from God to humans is, do not be afraid. And it takes courage to stand before God just as we are and name what really is. We'd much rather ignore, justify, rationalise or medicate the truth about ourselves until we come to terms with who we really are, that we're utterly lost without God, we cannot begin to know God. And Jesus used questions to help people excavate where they were really at. Some examples of courageous questions. Well, if Jesus was sitting beside you now, what would you want to say to him? If Jesus was standing where I am or sitting next to you, what do you think he'd say to you about the situation you're facing? Here's one just for your own reflection. If Jesus himself came into the room, which part of my life would I try to conceal? See, we have a greater need than ever to learn from Jesus how to ask transformational questions. And, you know, we, we, need, we need to seek to help people be at home with real, where they really are in order to meet God there. So let's learn from Jesus. Be quicker to ask and listen before downloading what we want to say. We can be confident that the Holy Spirit's there at work before us. So listen to the Holy Spirit. Be curious about how you and questions could be part of yours and others' transformation as you participate in God's mission. Let's pause. Let's pray. Let's pray. So just this morning, as we've talked on this topic of questions, just pause for a moment before rushing off into the day. And if Jesus was sitting right next to you, what would you want to say to him? And what would he say back to you? Lord, thank you for your loving presence, always at work, in us and through us, transforming us. Give us wisdom and compassion, not only as we use questions to minister to others, but also give us courage as we ourselves ask questions that lead to a deeper relationship with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Mike, could you bring the team up?